Hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So in this video, I am once again taking you behind the scenes during an actual wedding and I will show you how to control bokeh, especially when you are shooting a couple. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, now is the perfect time to do so because I am still giving away a beautiful backdrop from Kate Backdrop. This backdrop is a 1.5 meter by 2 meter collapsible non-reflective backdrop and the best thing about this giveaway is that I will give the winner the chance to be able to choose the design that they want. And to join is very simple, all you have to do is follow the mechanics in the description below. So as I said in my intro, I am taking you once again behind the scenes during an actual wedding shoot. So here goes. So in this layout, I just went down and I'm now at ground level and I want to be able to shoot them about half body. And this is the one that interested me actually, this backdrop, if you can, if you can show it here. Um, these plants, I know right now there's no light, but the moment I pop a flash there, I know that the, the greens are going to start popping out. So this one's just going to be a very, very simple portrait. And even if it's flat lighting, we're actually going to be able to create some contrast using, again, my Magmod Magbox with a 24-inch Octa and my Profoto B2. The camera that I'll use is an A7R Mark IV and the lens will be a 50mm 1.4. So the composition will be like this. I'll probably still be shooting in high-speed sync because I want to shoot wide open. So the most important thing, since I'm shooting wide open, is I have to get the groom and the bride in the same plane more or less they want to be in, in the same distance from my lens if not i might balk as someone so that is what's going to dictate the post now since i want to shoot wide open and i want to blur out that background okay so um what else okay the settings that we're going to be doing right now we're still this time we're on aperture priority it's at f1.4 and then i'm just touch i'm just fixing my exposure using my exposure compensation dial my ISO is an auto ISO and the shutter speed will just let it be. And then I'll put my trigger here, there, and I can just put the flash on TTL. There. So this is the exposure. Wait, my white balance is also set now. I'm going to set my white balance to, to auto, but basically I think I want it, I want it in cloudy to make it warmer. but. And this is the actual exposure. I'll take one shot now. This is how it looks like. This is how it looks like without flash. There. That's how it looks like without flash. So, then this is how it's going to look like underexposed and without flash. No, that's too much. One stop. There. That's how it's going to look like underexposed without flash. So there, you've got a richer tone of green. So I'm going to put them right there in that pocket. And then this flash here will light up that area also. Okay. So the, again, as I was saying earlier, the pose is dependent. Of course, they have to be in the same plane. And then how I determine the position of the bride in terms of the posing is, of course, her angle. And her angle, Risa's angle is on her right side. So every shoot that we do, I will be shooting her right side. So that's how we're going to be posing her now. I'm making Jeffrey face this side, his left side, but honestly, that is not his angle. But sorry to say, but when it comes to couple portraits during weddings, priority will always go to the girl. So we're always following the girl's side. So, so we're basing it here now. Since I'm having them both on the reelings, definitely they're going to be in the same plane as my camera. So I won't be blurring each or any one of them. So guys, just go in closer and just be yourself. But I need to see, Risa, I need to see your face all the time, huh? So you can't really be facing Jeffrey too much, okay? All right, so that got closer. Here's the thing, when you're shooting couples, when you're shooting couples, whenever you tell them to go closer, they think they're so close, but then you always have to tell them, and if you're not the dueling, you're not close enough, <laughs> all right? So what's that in English? <laughs> okay, 
close is not close enough. Try to get them as close as possible because when they think that they're close enough, they're really not close enough, such as this case. All right, that is their close, but we need them closer. There we go. Too much? No, I'm sorry, go. Go in, closer. Nice, very nice. Jeffrey, I need you to chin up a little bit. Too much. Oh, I know, this is what we do. Jeffrey, take one step back, then lean forward. So that you're gonna be, some, you're gonna be, you're actually too far. So your right foot put it in. Right foot put it in, some more, some more, some more towards Risa, there. So that you can angle your body a bit, right? And then go in closer. There, perfect. Oh, nice, very nice. Very nice. Now we turn on the flash. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. Risa, smile. And you know, lately I've been shooting a lot horizontal because horizontal pictures look better in the gram. I love it. Hey, reach it. A little bit closer. How about putting your, putting your arm on his chest again, Risa? There. And then hold on to it, Jeffrey, again. Hold on to the hand. Hold on to the hand, Jeffrey. There. I love it. It's beautiful. I really like it. Hold on. That's it. Jeffrey, you're too close. Profile to your left. There. Love it. Beautiful. Risa, smile. I love it. And final shot. And on to the next layer. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And just to recap, the control for bokeh, especially when shooting a couple, is two things. One is you have to understand that they should have the same distance to your camera lens. In other words, keep them in the same plane so that you don't bokeh one person. If you have one person that's forward, maybe closer to the camera, there will be a tendency for you to bokeh that other person who will be away from the camera, depending on where you are focusing. And secondly, you also have to consider, which I failed to mention in the video, is focal length. Now, focal length, the longer your focal length is, the more bokeh you will have and the less play you have with bokeh. In other words, since I shot this one with a 50 millimeter, I had a little bit of room to move as compared to me shooting it with an 85 or a 135 or a 200 millimeter or, or anything longer than that. So now to complete the entire process, let's edit one of those images. So my primary raw conversion software is Capture 121. And here you could see this is the chosen image from that particular layout. All I did first in the initial background layer is basically just adjust the brightness. Then I created a new layer, which I entitled Shadows, where I adjusted the brightness a bit and the shadows also and masked the subject. In other words, it is only affecting a certain part of the image where I feel the blacks are too black. After which I created a new layer, which I called couple, that I just basically adjusted their exposure a bit. Just slightly, maybe about just 0.5 of a, of 0.5 of a stop or plus 0.5. That should be good enough. And finally, I adjusted the white balance of the scene in the back. I think for me, I like their color already. So I just adjusted the white balance of the trees in the back. Okay, so from there, we open it up in Photoshop. So now I have my image opened up in Photoshop. Basically, there's nothing really more that I want to do with the image, maybe except remove this part here. So I will create a new layer by pressing Command J, and I'll probably take my clone stamp tool and see what I can do. So I'll take a sample from here, copy it to this one there. Oh, there, perfect, that's it. And I think I might want to make it a bit warmer. So what I'll do is I'll press Command J again and go to my filters menu and go to camera raw filter. And I will adjust my white balance here. Yeah, I think that should be okay. Very nice. Okay, then from there, basically all I'll do is create a merge layer by pressing Command Option E. And from there, I will do my contrast sharpening. Now sharpening images for me is basically just sharpening certain parts of the image. So I will mask that sharpened layer and I will brush back basically just the parts that I want sharp. So that's gonna be the hair, the eyes, parts of the nose, the mouth, eyes, parts of the nose, 
the mouth, the hair, and the clothes. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you will see a big difference when it comes to the sharpening there. You can see it there, it pops just for contrast. And from there we save it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and don't forget if you want a chance to win our giveaway for this month, the mechanics are all in the description below. Okay, so till the next video.